All right, episode 17, EBE. Um, so we basically have another fallen angel here, but I don't think they wanted to call it another fallen angel. Um, and Mulder's investigating this thing. He stops two stopwatches at the same time, and they're, they're both running in different times. Um, and I love how Scully always goes with Mulder even though she doesn't really believe him, he's his part. She, he's her partner. You know, she's with him. Like she goes on the most crazy wild goose chases. Anytime he's like, "Oh well, I think there's uh, this going on. There's a fucking um, UFO in the back of a truck or whatever," Scully's like, "All right, let's go." Like she, I, I don't know. As much as she doesn't believe him, at the same time, I just think it's pretty awesome that she does. Um, and <laughs> when Mulder comes to investigate, Scully and Mulder come to investigate this thing. The cop comes in and he's like, you know what? Just go away. Okay? Just go away. Um, and I love that when Mulder and Scully get on the bus to leave, that as soon as they walk onto the bus, it just takes off instantaneously. Man, they must, you know, they got some uh, FBI uh, VIP status or something. Now, this is the first episode to show and introduce the lone gunman. Oh man, do I love these dudes. Frohickey and company, such a big fan. <laughs> I love these guys. Um, I'm still, I mean, we're so far out from me finishing this show. I'm still only on season one of 11. Um, but I'd love to do the lone gunman in Millennium next. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, oh man, the lone gunman. I only think I watched like one or two episodes of their show when it was on. But I remember really liking it. It's just back then I, I didn't. Uh, I was out. I had a life. I, did. <laughs> I was a kid. I was having fun. Um, anyways, so Scully's pen gets bugged. which She's kind of like, this is ridiculous, Mulder. Who would be? And then she goes like, oh crap. What the hell do I know? Uh, Deep Throat comes back yet again. He really is in every damn episode. Um, they find out that this truck driver was transporting a uh, craft in the back of his truck, or at least Mulder thinks anyways. But when they pull it over, there is like, um, you know, medical equipment to um, tr transport a hurt biological entity. Um... And so Mulder is given a picture from Deep Throat, which is the best evidence that Mulder's ever seen. And Scully like immediately looks at it and she's like, this thing's fake. And Mulder, of course, he's so, you know, stuck in his ways that he leaves out. And I love the speech that Dana gives to Fox here, like about his commitment to his cause and how sometimes it blinds him and, and all the way it's worded, the way she delivers that, I adore that um, that moment between them. I think uh, Jillian really gives a great performance there and that it really fits Scully's character and it really talks to a lot of uh, Fox's flaws because he is so apt to just believe. He wants to believe, as his poster states. Like, I want to believe. And sometimes that blinds him. I mean, it's kind of like a religion or something. Like, you know? Scientists prove the earth is older than 6,000 years old. And it's like, no, I don't believe it. You know, I want to believe that it's only 6,000 years old because the Bible says so. And it's like, but it's not. And it's like, but it is. And it's like, how do you argue with, but it is. It's like, here's the proof it isn't. And then <laughs> someone's refuting that. Like, no, I don't believe what you're saying. I don't believe your evidence. And it's like, oh, okay. I, okay. Oh, all right. So yeah, I mean, Mulder's kind of that same way. This is like his religion. It's his quest. He, he can't be told. But unlike most religious people, Mulder actually questions this and listens to Scully and doubts his own um, belief there. And when he has it checked out, he realizes it is a fake. And he outright admits it when he sees the proof in front of his eyes. Come on, people. When you see proof, that's enough. But yeah, Mulder is, is, uh, is smart enough to understand that when he sees the proof, he'll accept it, and I love that. Um, and <clears throat> let's see here. 
Uh, I love that one. Scully goes, she goes, uh, they're, they're trying to fly out and they know they're being bugged. There's one in Mulder's um, electrical outlet. Um, and so they, they decide like, all right, we need to track this truck down. When Mulder says that, well, Scully's like instantly on board. I'll spend my own money. Like, let's investigate this. I need to see this through. And so she goes to the airport and she buys a ticket uh, somewhere. Like, I can't remember where. And then she buys another ticket, which would be so suspicious today. You couldn't do this today. Under the same name, one in credit card, one in cash. Like, you can't pay for cash now. Like, you can't do anything off the books as you once could. Like, this is a different time when you could just buy something in cash and no one asked questions. Like, you went to a hotel. Like, I'm paying in cash. Like, I don't want anyone to ever know I'm here. Nope. We got to look at your ID. We got to look at everything. Um, so it's interesting. It, it, it always is a reminder of the time that this was made in. But uh, they go to such lengths to make sure that they are not being followed. Um, of course, they, as I said, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to do that now. But uh, I love Scully's dedication to this as well. As much as she was saying that to Mulder earlier in the episode, she is also a, um, you know, she is also a... Uh, purveyor of the truth like she wants to go out and find it she's she's on a she's on a mission she's on a quest as well um so i like that she kind of sticks to that um then they find the medical transport and Mulder assesses that that was yet another fake an elaborate fake for them to um you know be thrown off the trail and so they call the lone gunmen because they find this facility where they think that it's being housed the alien the uh, extraterrestrial biological entity, the EBE. Um, so uh, the lone gunmen hack them into this place, and we get Curtis from 24 here making a little uh, little spot uh, as the guy that's uh, overseeing level six clearance to the door, which you would think that would be locked and there'd be some kind of thing. It's just a guy standing in front of it, really. They don't have like a magnetic key entry or anything Mulder just runs up and grabs the door and just write down like really like wow that's not very high tech security even Scully says right before they must have the highest form of security there is so you're telling me that in like 1994 the best technology they had to offer was a military personnel like army guy standing in front of a door that was it that's like time out that's what i do for my kids when they won't stay in time out just stand there <laughs> that's the most sophisticated time out is the most sophisticated <sighs> that's ridiculous uh and then so Mulder is like screw it and he runs for it hurts his leg he's trying to hand limp there and uh we find deep throat there and he's like you just missed him he died he outright says like we had an alien but there you go and we find out that Deep Throat, supposedly, this guy's full of lies, but he killed an alien back in the day. And it's haunted him ever since because he couldn't see the emotions on its face and whatnot. So he feels like a monster. And this is one of the reasons why he's helping Mulder. Like, that's like the main reason is he wants to right his wrong, supposedly. Um, but yeah, and uh, that's about it. Uh, it's a good episode. Uh, you know, really gets him. We get the lone gunman. I mean, that alone is worth this whole episode. The fact that we get those guys, um, the the lone gunmen are really funny in this episode. Um, and uh, you know, Mulder getting closer to the truth of the alien. We're getting like we're on track of the main storyline. We're not in the monsters of the weeks right now. Uh, it gets more monster of the week as this as these seasons progress. Um, but this season's actually for them, like, I would say half and half is sticking to like the main plot line and Deep Throat is in almost every one of these episodes and they're actually supposed to be little branches of these cover-ups, the majority of these episodes. It doesn't, it's not like that later on, like later on, it's just like completely detached. You'd only have to watch that episode episodes, um, to, to understand what is happening and who those people are and whatnot. Um, well, yeah, I think that's it. So, um, I'm, yeah, until next time. All right, guys.